Today we wander with St. Christopher, who died in 251. His feast day is July 25th. St. Christopher is the patron saint of travelers, bachelors, America, against nightmares, danger, and death. Christopher was a fearsome giant of a man from the desert lands of Canaan. And because he was the biggest and strongest man anyone had ever seen, he decided that he should only serve the world's greatest king. So Christopher searched the world until he found a great king. But when Christopher joined the great king's army, he realized something. The king wasn't always great. Whenever he heard the name of the devil, the king cowered in fear. If the king was afraid of the devil, Christopher reasoned, then the devil must be greater than this king. So Christopher went off to serve the devil. The devil led Christopher out into the desert, promising Christopher that he would give him everything he ever wanted. But as the two of them traveled across the burning sand, they came to a wooden cross, and the devil was terrified. If the devil was afraid of the cross, Christopher reasoned, then the cross must be greater than the devil. But Christopher had no idea what the cross meant, so he left the devil in the desert and went off in search of someone who could tell him. Nobody seemed to know until he found an old hermit, a man who lived off in a cave by himself because he didn't want to live with anyone else. The cross is a sign of Jesus, the hermit told him. Who is Jesus? Christopher asked. Jesus is a great king, the hermit told him. He's so strong that when people nailed him to a cross and killed him, he rose from the dead. He is greater than any king who ever lived or who ever will live. How can I serve Jesus? Christopher asked. The hermit told him he should fast, not eating for days and days. That's too hard, Christopher said. Then you should pray, said the hermit. I don't know how to do that, Christopher told him. The hermit thought for a minute. Do you know the river near here? He asked. The one that's very deep with a current so fast that many people who try to cross it are swept away and lost? I know that river, Christopher said. Go live by it the hermit said, and carry anyone who needs help across. Maybe Jesus will visit you there. So Christopher made his home by the river and carried anyone who asked to the other side. One night, a small child appeared along the river bank. Will you carry me across? He asked Christopher. Christopher put the child on his shoulders and stepped out into the river, as he had so many times before. But this time something was different. With every step Christopher took in the water, the child grew heavier. By the time Christopher got to the middle of the rushing river, he was in terrible pain. He didn't know if he could get to the opposite bank or return to the one he came from. He was even afraid he might drown himself. But step after step, Christopher never gave up. Using every bit of his great strength, he carried the child on his back safely through the dangerous waters and set him down on the far bank. Child, he said, you put me in great danger. I felt as if I was carrying the weight of the world. Not just the world, the child said, but the one who made it. I am Jesus, the king you serve. The child looked at the staff that Christopher held in his hand. Drive your staff into the riverbank, he said. Without question, Christopher obeyed. As soon as he did, the child disappeared. The next morning, Christopher's staff had sprouted like a palm tree full of flowers, dates, and leaves. Christopher went into the city to tell the people there about Jesus. When they heard his story and saw that his staff had sprouted leaves and fruit, many of the people decided to follow Jesus. The king in the city was angry and afraid. He didn't like the idea of his people following some other king, especially not one like Jesus who could appear and disappear and grow flowers from a piece of dead wood. So he ordered his men to arrest Christopher. But when the men he sent heard Christopher talk about Jesus, they decided to follow Jesus instead. So the king ordered those men killed. Then he had Christopher tied to a stake and summoned 40 of his best archers. At the king's command, all the archers loosed their bows at Christopher, but every single arrow clattered to the ground before any hit him except one arrow. It flew wild and struck the king's eye, blinding him. 
The king staggered up from his throne, clutching at the arrow. Tomorrow I will die, Christopher told the king. When I do, take some of my blood, mix it with clay, and it will heal your eye. The next day the king had Christopher beheaded. But the king was desperate to see again. So even though he'd condemned Christopher to death, he did as Christopher had said. And when he smeared the mud made from Christopher's blood on his ruined eye, his sight was restored. So even the king believed in Jesus, who was greater than any other king in the world, even from the time when he was just a little child.